Oh no. They're back. It's another Creaky Gamers Battle Report. Warhammer, the old roll. Let's inspect the forces and get on with it. Yeah, so there is the uh, the Bone Dragon. There's Kiefer Tep, the Undying, when he rides his uh, Bone Dragon. But I resisted the temptation for the unkillable Bone Dragon. And he steps down and he's going to ride around on his chariot. So, a bit more sporting. We'll see how he goes on the chariot. I'll probably be crying out, wish I had my dragon. Okay, so just a quick overview. Newly painted um, Tomb Kings making their debut on the channel. Armour of Destiny and the Sword of Might riding his chariot. Um, I have a level four. She's going to be my high priest with the Cloak of Dunes. I thought that was a re decent model for a Cloak of Dunes. Uh, and then I've got a level two mortuary priest with the Ruby Ring of Ruin. Um, two units of chariots, no command or anything. So that's the uh, GW ones. And there's some 3D printed chariots here. So just for some variety. So there's some more chariots. So two units of three chariots, unit of 10 um, archers. Skelly Archers, a unit of 24 uh, Grave Guard. No, uh, full command, I think. I may have dropped the musician, I'll have to check the list, but uh, there's the Grave Guard, 24 Grave Guard. Um, and then special, I've got four Usharpti with the, with the blades um, and a couple of Scorpions. There's some 3D printed Scorpions. I just managed to squeeze them onto a 50 mil base by mounting them up a little bit. Uh, and then the casket of souls, just because I wanted to use it. Uh, the bone giant or necro colossus, wherever he is now, and the necro sphinx. So that is the army. 2,000 points. We'll see how they go. It's an undead off. And the, uh, the Strigoi are back again. There's the general, no crown of the dam this no. time. No. And he's got his battle standard with him. Yeah. Um, Drakenhof banner. Drakenhof banner on the battle standard. Yeah. The level two, what spells did he get? Uh, so he got uh, Unquiet Spirits and Spirit Leech. Okay, yep. Um, yeah. And the level four. Level four, he's got Curse of Years. Van Hell's Dance Macabre, Unquiet Spirits, and Spirit Leech. Okay, yep. Alright. And, and the Terrorgeist, the Strigoi King on the Terrorgeist, he's got the Ogre Blade and the Talisman of Protection. Yep. And then we've got Vargeist. Vargeist. Ghouls. Ghouls. Big block of ghouls. Ghouls. And some and more Vargeist lurking. More Vargeist. Lurking behind the. Okay. And then the. Um, the Tomb Kings have formed a big line here. They've got unit of chariots out there. Scorpion, Bone Giant, 10 archers, uh, 24 Grave Guard. Uh, there's the Casket of Souls. And then my level four, she's taken Illusion and she's got Confounding. Where is she? There she is. Confounding Convocation, Column of Crystal, uh, Miasmic Mirage, and she's taken Incantation of Blades from the Tomb King Lore. Then we've got Level 2 with the Ruby Ring of Ruin, uh, and uh, Wind Blast, and Incantation of Desiccation. And there's the Tomb King on the chariot. The uh, Tomb Sphinx, another scorpion, and some chariots out there. That is it. Okay, so a couple of rules, uh, things we got wrong here. Well, one thing is my scorpions. I put them on a 50mm um, square base. They're meant to be on a 75 wide by 50 mil. Anyway, so I've, I've fixed them up since this battle. Um, and the Ghoul King on the Terrorgeist and the Ghoul King in the unit, but he also had a level four as well. We didn't pick that up until later, so he had too many Lord level characters. But um, anyway, we played on, we didn't realize till afterwards. So turn one.
Okay, so we go into turn one and um, the ghouls uh, just shuffle forward. There's nothing really happening in their command phase or uh, conjuration phase. Um, no buffs or no hexes in range. And he's just keeping the Vargeist on either flank uh, in open order formation, just hiding them behind terrain so they don't get drawn out with Frenzy. Not that the uh, Tomb Kings have anybody who can flee away from a Frenzy charge anyway. So a reserve move up the middle and the Necromancer decides to stay back just in range to do some dispelling. Um, and the Tomb Kings do have quite a few uh, hexes and so on. And uh, But that level 4 in the centre of the table there is able to dispel most of it. So the casket doesn't go off and... Um, so on. So he's always got uh, just a couple of more pips on the dice to dispel most things. So the value of a level four, uh, in this case the necromancer, um, the only thing I got off was my will be done and uh, D3 extra move for Kiefer Tep on his chariot. So the um, Necro Sphinx and uh, Kiefer Tep on his chariot have moved around to flank that unit. And I've done a silly thing and moved my block of uh, Tomb Guard up within charge range of his big block of ghouls. So that's probably a mistake. And I'm just shuffling back on my right flank because I don't want to take on the Terrorgeist, the Strigoi Ghoul King on the Terrorgeist on his left flank. So the Bone Giant and the Chariots there have moved back out of charge range of the Terrorgeist. Uh, might pepper some of the units with a bit of shooting from the archers. But that's pretty much it. I've swept around this flank, maybe threatened there, and the chariots to keep those uh, Vargeist honest behind the woods. So the plan's going okay. Um, we'll see what happens in turn two. Your turn two. Yeah. I'm going to cast Curse of Years. Mm -hmm. On the Tomb Guard? Yep. So a successful magic phase for the Necromancer who got Curse of Years off on my Tomb Guard. Um, and uh, a few other little buffs or something. I think he got uh, a buff on, on his unit and Curse of Years on my unit. Um, then got Van Hells. He got Van Hells on his, his uh, ghouls and... Um, Curse of Years on my Tomb Guard. So he's just lining up a charge here um, into the movement phase. Once I get that camera steady, I'll get it, get it right. There we are. And then, um, so they're going to, the big block of ghouls is going to charge into the Tomb Guard. Let's see if they can get that charge off. Got six. Oh, -ho! oh no, this going to slow me down, isn't it? Oh, minus one inch. Yeah. So the six will do it. Yep. Get rolled a six then. I think it's only... Uh... Yes, well, there's a, a trap for young players. They've got um, Curse of Years on them and the uh, Ghouls have got Van Hells on them. So it was a good magic phase and a good charge. You needed a five or a six to get in there and he rolled a five and a six. Uh, the Terrorgeist jumping over the building and we had to look up the Vargeist. They started out the battle in open order, but uh, we decided they're better off in skirmish. So I think that they can just do a reform and go into skirmish. That's what we decided on. Couldn't find it in the rule book at the time, but I've since been told that they can just do a reform and go into skirmish. But um, they're threatening the Necro Sphinx and Kiefer Tep on his chariot, who will probably go after those ghouls there with, or maybe the, I have the Yashabti there as well. So he's he's given up those un that unit of ghouls to the Yashabti at least there. And uh, threatening in the center now with the Terrorgeist. I do have these chariots and the Necro Sphinx to try and take care of those Vargeist when they come out of behind, from behind the woods. So interestingly poised, but um, yeah, I think a bit of an error in my part. I should not have given the ghouls a charge onto my Tomb Guard. Though I'm hoping that the Tomb Guard can hold, but they are debuffed with Curse of Years. So that'll make them easier to kill. Uh, I do have some arise, so I can raise some back, but we'll see what happens there. 
Okay, so this combat, uh, it's not going to go well for the Tomb Guard. And I sh should not, I'm ki still kicking myself now, moving them up and letting him have a charge there. Uh, but also, I didn't know he was going to get Curse of Years off on them and so on. So the Ghoul King makes short work of a few, and the BSB, and then the poison attacks from the uh, Ghouls as well make short work of a couple of ranks of the Tomb Guard. So after the combat is all said and done, we've lost a couple of ranks, and uh, they're going to get pushed back in my Hierophant who was standing behind them, was a bit nervous for a moment there. But we held on, uh, only a few Tomb Guard left alive. So it wasn't a good result for the Tomb Guard. Okay, Tomb King's turn two. When do those spells come off? Uh, this is at the start of your next start of turn subclass. That was this, right. So I'm still, I'm still cursed years. Okay, yeah, my guys are still Van Hills. Yeah. All right, so Tomb King's turn two and the Conjuration phase after um, Keithotep did uh, My Will Be Done and gave himself an extra D3 inches of movement. Um, so I'm going through my hexes and uh, my enchantments and the casket and so on. Um, so I'm rolling there, I've rolled a, rolled a good 8, but uh, he's level 4 in the centre of the board there. The, um, the Necromancer, level 4, is just shutting down every spell. So there, I've rolled a 7, and then the Necromancer rolls an 8, and I'm getting plus 2 or something, so uh, for the casket at least, and plus 4. So no spells. I don't get any spells off. <laughs> okay. All right. So then I'll do charges. Alright, I'll do because I'm desperate to see what he's gonna do. So the uh, the bone giant, the necrolith colossus, yep. is can see those ghouls. He's gonna try and charge the ghouls. No, so just roll. For the giant. He's going ten, but I don't think that's enough. Maybe. So if I wheel around there. Maybe I'll, do, I'll see what I do. So if he went up, he's going 10. Get in, so you'll have to come around. If I go, he's not going to go in. They're big on 5 plus 10. 5 plus 5, they're going 10. Just got to look. I've got to, I haven't even looked at how fast things are. <laughs> Maximise like that. Yeah, that's right. A level 4 is in trouble. Where is he there? Yeah. He's not in the unit, though, is he? No. no. Okay, so into the remaining moves and then into uh, the shooting phase. I do have a couple of shots with the archers over the top at the Terror Geist. I might have got a couple of wounds on him, but he's going to heal those back later on. And then uh, cast a column of crystal. It's only got a nine inch range, so I've just sort of the Hierophant is there and I sort of poked my nose through there to place the template. Um, but I don't think it's going to do much good at that position but anyway i cast it so one of the first spells i got off um, the casket hasn't done anything either there's the bit of couple of wounds onto the terror guys from the archers and he takes a couple of wounds so that was pretty good shooting from the um the archers skelly archers over the top there into the terror guys a couple of wounds shooting doing some work okay and then um well the um the necro sphinx and the chariots are just um having a standoff with these Vargas behind the woods there and the other chariots and so on, having some pot shots at the Vargas on the other flank with uh, Scorpion, uh, Scorpion that failed its charge into there. Um, so that's pretty much it. We'll just have a look at the combats and see how they go. Interested to see how the Bone Giant goes. Um, combat. Nope, he gets two hits. Um, he's strength six. Here's the one. Has he got anything else? <laughs> what is he got? Yeah, one wound. Regen side? Yeah. No. Right, so then he gets another attack. He hits. He does another wound. Yep, another dead. Yep. 
All right, so he gets another attack. He misses. Saved us. Oh, well, the Bone Giant um, did a little bit of damage here. The Thunder Stomp helped at the end. Oh, he's got Thunder Stomp. Anyway, his Stomp Attack at the end helped. And then the uh, Ghouls uh, with the Strigoi King in there with the BSB. Uh, they're making short work of the Tomb Guard. I did manage to raise some quite a good number of the Tomb Guard back. Another five or six came back. Uh, but uh, they're fighting like skeletons at the moment. Tomb Guard are a good unit, but they're debuffed by Curse of Years, and um, the ghouls are buffed up by Van Hells, so they may hang on for another turn, but it's not looking good for the Tomb Guard, unless I can get somebody in there to help them. You have to be careful with Undead, sending things in to help, because they all start crumbling if that happens. So, um, a few more Tomb Guard gone, but they may hold from just maybe one more turn before that's the end of them. It'll be a different story where the Ushabti go into the ghouls over here. So there's the Ushabti with Kiefer Tep on his chariot, does some impact hits, and the attacks from the Ushabti finishes them off. So that unit of ghouls is gone, and then we'll uh, pass our test so we can just uh, reform. Yeah, so they're just going to reform the Ushabti. You're going to reform that way to face the Ghoul King in the big unit of ghouls. And Kiefer Tep goes over that way to help out versus the Vargeis. Invocation of Nehek. Right on the ghouls over there fighting the giant. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, nope. Roll 10. Mm. Leadership's only nine or eight. I can't remember one of those two, but you know what? It hasn't gone off then, has it? Um, all right, so he will do. You got that guy, he can do it. Oh, he has to stay magic. Ah, uh, he's got magic. He's in combat, he can't do it. You can, oh, you can't do no heck in combat. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put the curse of years on that unit again. Oh, it comes off now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try and stop it. Uh, I'm on 14. Oh. Oh. No, oh, look, that's terrible. A three. I'll put it back on him. Now I'll try and do put this back on the. Yeah. Do I want it on these guys? It doesn't really matter. It just adds one to weapon skill and one to initiative. So, Curse of Years off again on the Tomb Guard. I was hoping they could hold for a little bit longer. I did jump the Horophant over this way. Uh, she's got the Quoker Dunes. So, I'm hoping that the uh, Bone Giant will finish off those ghouls. So um, the undead, the vampires, seem to have magic ascendancy here. And then I get a lucky break here. The terror geist decides to charge the Ushabti, and it's a failed charge. So a failed charge there, and then he's got the Vargeist going in as well. Good for that. Yeah. We go the lowest, the uh, highest, highest, highest of the dice. Yeah, yeah. so we'll just pull Who's these guys? What are they going to need? They're going to need a five. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they don't have switch right or anything. Nope. They oh, no. Oh, no. I failed charge. <laughs> Normal moves. Normal moves then. Okay, well, a bit of luck. Uh, not even much luck with magic, but a couple of failed charges there. So those Vargeist have just shuffled forward, and the Terrorgeist has just shuffled forward. So those two failed charges have really um, saved my bacon here. The Tomb Kings will now be able to um, dictate a bit of a few of the combats, uh, but uh, plenty of those uh, Tomb Guard are going to die this turn. But failed charges has helped us out a bit. Okay, and then uh, in the shooting phase, the, uh, the Necromancer, level 4 Necromancer, manages to get a spell off again, and he's doing a magic missile into my archers. He wipes out about half the archers unit. I think it was 3d6 strength 2 hits. I can't remember what the name of the spell was. Um, I'll put it up on the screen in a second if I remember. Uh, you remember to move the Vargeist up there, and then we're into the combats, and... I must admit I made a bit of a mistake here in the rules. He, the Bone Giant, Necrolith Colossus, whatever his name is, he 
Um, he's striking second here, and he does take a wound, but he does not get sustained assault, and it's only when he charges. So um, I think he did a fair bit of damage anyway, but um, I got a few extra attacks where I shouldn't have, and then his stomp did a bit extra as well. So those uh, ghouls were wiped out eventually. Maybe I got an extra attack there or two that I shouldn't have. So he pursued or overran forward. And then Curse of Years on my Tomb Guard again, um, with the Vampire and the BSB in the front rank, and then all the uh, ghouls with their poison attacks. Um, I did challenge this time, but it's all to no avail, and the Tomb Guard will crumble to dust. So that gives him the opportunity to get out of trouble here and he'll be able to reform. He's captured the standard, so I gave him the standard behind the unit there. Um, so they're going to reform, pass their test to not overrun, and um, which they did with a BSB reroll, luckily, and they're going to turn to face the Ushabti, who are destined to charge them, I'd say. Right. Star of Tomb Kings, turn three. I'll do my Arise on my Skeleton yeah, Mirage. Mirage. I'll do that on the big guy. Yep. Seven, um, eleven. And that's just enough. Yep, I got a miscast. Oh, another one. Yeah, miscast table. Oh, I don't think that's good. Dimensional Cascade. Place a 5-inch template over the wizard. Every model hits up as a strength 10 at AP4. Ooh. So. so, yeah, finally, uh, a little bit of magic goes off. I had moved uh, my Hierophant, level 4, up near the dragon. The dragon, or Terrorgeist, failed his charge, so put him right in front of my wizard. So it was time for a Miasmic Mirage on him. And... Um, and then he miscast trying to dispel it. So the magic dice have turned around. So there's the Hierophant. Cast the Miasmic Mirage on the uh, Terrorgeist. So that'll slow him down. So things have turned around. A couple of failed charges. And uh, finally getting a spell off. And the Necromancer takes a wound. Now just uh, contemplating charges, so Kiefer tap on his chariot and the Necrosphinx are going to go into the uh, Vargeist there. Uh, the Ashabdi decide to go into the Ghouls and the Bone Giant decides to go after the other Vargeist. So just moving those charges in and um, in go the Ushabti into the Ghouls with the Vampires in there. Maybe a mistake, we'll find out. And then finally the bone, bone giant. He has the flank of the terrorgeist open, but he decides to go and tie up those uh, vargeists instead. So some charges. We'll have some combat this turn. All right, then into the combats here. And uh, the bone giant, he charged. And I'm just looking it up here. He is initiative one. So he's initiative four on the charge. So he's going to go the same time as the Vargeist. I'm pretty impressed with Vargeist. Every battle I've used them and faced them, they've done pretty well. In this case, um, I did manage to survive with one wound. So he got his uh, unstoppable assault off and he took uh, four wounds plus the one he already had. So he was on five. And I've looked it up since then and his toughness six strength six but only five wounds so he should have died in that combat he, he lingered on but anyway so there's a little mistake there so he's only got five wounds he's toughness six with five wounds not six wounds um and then the yashabdi charged into the vampire here and a couple of the yashabdi died and um then the ghouls, etc. got stuck into them as well, and um, it wasn't very good for the Ushabdi, so that's going to be a... Um, they're going to get wiped out here, I think, um, with the Indomitable, etc. And I think there's enough to finish them off here. What are we doing? I might, might be doing my attacks. So I've lost six wounds. Indomitable one, plus they had ranks, standard, etc. And I think that Scorpion who had moved up 
behind the Usharp due to help them out. Yeah, he's going to be in trouble because they're going to overrun and um, they're going to go into that Scorpion. So not a good place to stand behind the Usharpti there. So they get an easy charge into that Scorpion. And then this one here, uh, the mighty Kiefer Tep the Undying with his impact hits and the Chariot and the Necro Sphinx. Um, the... Vargeist actually survived. They finished up uh, with uh, one guy left with one wound or something. I think um, I did the Thunder Stomp and everything like that. So they did manage to survive. So that combat's going to go on for another turn. Not that they're going to survive, but they're just holding us up. So I can't turn around and go and help out in the middle. So that was the combat. Um, so the Bone Giant should be dead. He's going to still be alive on one wound, but he's only got five wounds. Sorry about that. That's another mistake. But first game with the Tomb Kings. Uh, got uh, a couple of things wrong. The Scorpion base size. I'll fix that up. And the Bone Giant. Well, he might not make the next game. Let's see what happens. Yeah, he gets it off. Um. So into turn four and the uh, the oh, bone oh, giant, he should oh, be dead, oh, is fighting oh, that oh, uh, Vargas. The Vargas oh, make short oh, work oh, of him. At, um, oh, I keep oh, oh, rolling oh, my oh, final regen, oh, keep oh, rolling a six oh, with oh, one oh, wound oh, left. But he didn't really have one wound left, but don't oh, tell oh, anyone. Oh, anyway, and then um, the oh, ghouls oh, here, oh, they're oh, going to oh, make um, six, short six, work of my scorpion. So my scorpion's not going to get a chance to do a killing blow on the general. So they finish off him. And they're going to go even further. They're rampaging through my whole lines now. Uh, they've killed the Dusharbti, the Scorpion, and the Ninja Chariots. And then uh, these guys, Keith and Tim, are going to just finish off that uh, guys, And they're going to reform and turn around and face the other way. But uh, it might be too late now. They're going to be out of the battle. They took too long to take care of those uh, Vargeist. So that's the end of the Vargeist. And end of the um, vampires turn four. And he's carrying their standard and everything, so the ghoul's hard to kill. Right. Vampires turn five. Alright, so I'm going to try and do invocation of Nehek. Yeah. On himself. Any? I don't know. Okay, so just trying to keep this brief now after I've. Um, I feel ashamed that I've uh, let the bone giant drag on with. Um, one more wound than he should have. Um, we did a little bit of shooting, etc., onto the Terrorgeist with the archers and the chariots, etc., from behind, but um, just a couple of wounds, and then he's going to get a long bomb charge over that hill. We're saying that you can see over that hill uh, into the Necrosphinx. So now the Terrorgeist is going to get into the action. So over he goes into the uh, Necrosphinx. I wasn't sure we didn't declare. Can you see over hills? Anyway, it's only a tiny little hill. Maybe you should model your hills a bit higher if you're going to say they're going to block line of sight. So they're just hills. Um, and then the unkillable big unit block of ghouls in the middle. Um, I don't have anything that could take care of them now. And then we have this big combat here. The vampire on the Terrorgeist into the Necro Sphinx. Uh, the Necro Sphinx took a couple of wounds from the Vargeist earlier on. And he's going to take uh, make short work of the Necrosphinx. So the big big monsters. Um, I did roll a few um, regens there, but not enough. And uh, that's the end of him. He's going to reform to face uh, Kiefer Tep on his chariot. Okay, so uh, not much left to do now. The uh, the big block of ghouls in the middle with the vampire. We have them surrounded, but we don't have that many troops that can hit them. Uh, the mighty Kiefer Tep, the Undying, on his chariot decides, I'll go and assassinate that um, Necromancer. So that's the only charge, and then I'm just shuffling around. I'm moving the Scorpion up. Maybe I could charge in and assassinate his general, the Vampire, with the Scorpion. We'll see what happens there. Um, and again, the casket, I think I might finally get one of the casket's bound spells off now, now that his level 4 Necromancer is dead. Um, and then, yeah, so he charges up there, impact hits, etc., and his attacks. 
and the horses and they finish off the necromancer so that will shut down his magic defense so on turn six i'll be able to cast some spells So yeah, not much going to happen on turn 6, he's just got one big unit in the middle and the uh, Terrorgeist, the Terrorgeist didn't have anybody in his charge arc so he's just going to fly over and do some of his screaming or something but not much effect. Um, so we'll just move into the highlight of turn 6 is when in the Tomb King's turn the Scorpion charges in to try and assassinate the Vampire. And that's pretty much the end of the battle. So we'll just see what happens there. If he can uh, um, assassinate the general. I'll let this go. So I'll just choose to end the end of the remains in play thing. Yeah. He's got um, five. And then eight. And that's in. Yeah, that's heaps. Go in there. I'm going to try and kill him, blow your vampire. What's your initiative? My initiative is if I charge, it'll be three plus three, six. See if you can kill it first. Uh, weapon skill four. I think it's fated that I'm gonna get uh, <laughs> get chopped. Toughness five. Uh no, nothing from the human. Yep. Uh, and the other one? He's initiative six, the same as you. No, we'll do him, do him now, we'll get together before him, you know, yeah. Two hits. No, no wounds. What's his strength? Uh, his strength is five, but I'm at negative one at the moment. Oh, oh right, you minus one modified to their strength and toughness. Yeah. All right, okay. All right, well, I'll just do him. He's going to try and kill your vampire. So your are whipping skill six. Uh, six, yeah. Do I need fours? Yeah. Done four. Yep. <gasps> Come on. Three hits. Mm -hmm. Strength five. We're just looking for sixes here. Two. <laughs> He's dead. I'm well, just have a look. Hang on. What does it? What does it mean? Do you get your? I don't get regen. I'm sure. You get you your award save. No, I. I... Okay, well, we add up the points here after the vampire died, and it's a draw. It's within a couple of hundred points. Um, the um, the bone giant should be dead, so we probably should say maybe it would be a winning draw to the vampires, I'd say, because the bone giant should be dead. Um, maybe those var guys might be alive as well, but anyway... A little mistake there, but also we made a couple of mistakes with the vampires' um, characters allotment. And my scorpion should be on a 75 mil frontage base, which I've fixed. But anyway, um, and things on my side of things, I forgot the Necrosphinx extra attack and his um, ability to reroll ones versus a character. I should have put the uh, casket a bit further back or maybe to the side a bit so it wasn't in dispel range all game and didn't get anything off so the casket was kind of useless until the end when it was too late so i'll probably deploy the casket last and try and keep it out of dispel range of the enemy level four that would be a good tip yeah so you can see it there maybe i could have stuck it there's his level four there's the casket so probably if it was over here more it would have been able to buff better um yeah so that's 2020 hindsight and i had never used a casket before this is my second ever tomb king's army they're a nice easy army to paint so um, i had a tomb king's army way back in sixth edition i think they're long gone so it's all new, um, but they're a nice, easy, enjoyable army to paint. So I can recommend them to new players. Easy army to paint. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So um, that's my army there again. What would I change? Well, I'm just going to try a few other things out. Maybe um, some horse archers. Um, I'm trying to avoid using the bone dragon because I know it's too good. for it. Yeah, Anyway, but there's probably ways to kill them. I don't know, but they seem pretty powerful. So I'll just keep the, maybe the king on the chariot. I'll maybe put him here on foot in with the grave guard to give them a bit of uh, punch. Um, and try some horse archers, some skirmishing archers. So there's lots of options. 
So we'll see, we'll see what I come up with next. And that's it. So thanks for watching. Sorry about the rules mistakes. Um, but uh, we learn. All right. Bye for now. Thanks for watching another Creaker Cameras episode. I hope it wasn't the bad. Please like and subscribe. Just do it.